Okay, what we're going to take a look at now is adding the drop down functionality so that we do actually see something after we've logged in. And by the next lesson, I promise I'm going to find a way to turn this off. And if we take a look at this annoyance and the information, Chrome periodically checks your passwords against lists that have been published online. When doing this, your passwords and usernames are encrypted, so they can't be read by anyone, including Google. Hmm, not really convinced I need this enabled on a local host development site, so I'll have to find a way to turn that off before the next lesson. What we want to do here is add the functionality so that when we click on this, we see the drop down. Now, this functionality would normally be provided by Bootstrap and a combination of the Bootstrap JavaScript, but we're not using that because we don't want to add jQuery into our application. So what we need to do is head over to ngx bootstrap. And let's just turn off the console here. And what we're looking for inside here, we'll click on get started. And we're looking for drop downs. And what we need to do in here is take a look at the guidance for how we actually use this. And what we need to do is look at what we need to import. Each component inside here has a corresponding module that we need to add to our app module to make use of it. Since Angular 9, it doesn't support this kind of import, so we need to use this kind of import for all of our components inside here. So I'm just going to copy this line into my clipboard, head over to the app module, and I'm just going to paste in the import inside here and then what we need to do is use the bs drop down module for root and add this to our imports which i'm about to do now when we see for root on something this means that it's got some services or components that it needs to initialize along with the root module now we're inside our root module We've got our BS dropdown module and we need to add this for root to ensure that it loads up all of the services that it needs with our root module. That's the purpose of this. And let's see what else we need to do. We get some examples of all the components of how to actually use them. Now we've got different things inside here where we see a bit of text like this without anything else. This means it's a directive. So we have a dropdown directive inside here. We also have a drop down toggle directive for the actual toggle button. And then we've got a structural directive, which actually modifies the DOM in some way. And that's the drop down menu. And this is what we need to provide inside our component. So we'll head back to our nav component, the HTML, and we'll give it the drop down directive. And the toggle in this case is our welcome user. So we also need to give this the drop down toggle and then the drop down menu is going to receive the structural directive of the drop down menu so the structural directive is the one with the asterisks and what we'll also do just in between our edit profile is we'll add a divider so we'll say div dot drop down dash divider and this is just an empty div so let's go take a look. And if we go back to our application, we'll just log in as Bob once again with the password that Chrome doesn't like. And if we click on our welcome user, we can see now that we can get our links inside here to edit profile and log out. And if I click the log out button, then we are effectively logged out. But we could do with a bit of styling here. So let's go back and just open up the nav component CSS. So I'll search for this and open this. And what we want to do here, if you're ever stuck on a bit of styling, I'll need to log in once again. Then inside here, if we just right click and inspect, then we want to see what style we're about to overwrite. And we can see that the drop down toggle inside there is, is the content that we're clicking on. But if we click on a new style rule, then this tells us which element we're actually targeting here. But I also want to target the drop down items inside the drop down as well. So I'm going to style both the drop down item and the drop down toggle here. So we'll go back and go to our CSS and we'll say drop down dash toggle and we'll say dot drop down dash item 
and we're just going to make this a cursor of pointer and the menu was a little bit close to the user so what we'll also do is just use a class and where we've got our drop down menu we'll just add some margin top uh, so we can use MT which is a bootstrap class and we can specify the amount in here and there's five levels of margin and we'll just go for margin top of three and if we take another look and to be honest I've already reached my annoyance threshold with that annoying pop-up just because I'm using a, a password that's you, you, just for development it's not something I'd use on a real site so I'm going to tell Chrome to not annoy me with that anymore and we need to do this in privacy and security and inside security what we can take a look at is warn us if passwords are exposed in a data breach and I guarantee you the password I'm using for development of course it's a weak password it's PA dollar dollar W zero RD of course it's going to be on a list so I want to continue to use that though so I'm going to turn this off and hopefully that will resolve the problem so let's just refresh the page just in case and let's just log in as Bob one more time and PA dollar dollar W O R D take that Google and no warning brilliant but what we also see is now we've got a cursor pointer over our links it's moved down a little bit which makes me feel a bit better and our logout button also works as well so that's good and what we're going to do next is take a look at something we touched on earlier on but we need to get familiar with if we're going to use angular and that's the concept of observables and we'll discuss that next